All right. Good morning. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, let me just do a quick refresher to make sure the feed is live. There we go. There we go. That one looks like it's connecting. Perfect. All right. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. And today's painting is going to be of a sea turtle. Awesome. Hi, Mike. Hi, Anita. Thanks for jumping on. All right. Let me sit down and get ready. All right. So a few things about what you're looking at on the canvas. I am reusing a canvas. So this has been re gessoed and repurposed. There is a link in the description box below on how to repurpose your canvases. And this makes for really good practice. If you are making a painting for a gift to give to somebody, please use a fresh canvas. Don't use a regessoed one. The regessoed are more just for practice. And then another thing that you're looking at, we do have our design on here for today. And you've got two options. You can either pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or there is a link in the description box below. You can purchase the traceable, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer it to your canvas. And this traceable is already on the website right now. I'm trying to get better about um, having those ready prior to the demo. So feel free to jump on there. And whichever option that you choose, um, there's not one that's better than the other. It's just a nice way to get your initial composition on your canvas. All right. So let me pull up my reference photo for our turtle. We're going to do a little bit backwards today because we're actually going to put some designs on the shell or some colors on the shell and the fins so that way that can dry while we work on the background because I want this these browns to dry and then we can put our white lines uh, on top of it that are very uh, that are known for our sea turtles. So I am starting with that middle flat brush and we're going to kind of keep these kind of traditional colors for our sea turtle. So I'm going to pull some of that reddish brown that or the uh, raw sienna, the light brown, the reddish brown is here. We'll use that for a little bit of shading. Um, and this is going to be a bit more of like a brown turtle with and I'm going to use almost that direct blue uh, for the background. So it's going to be kind of intense, deep, saturated colors. And even though I am using more traditional colors today, you are more than welcome to switch out if you want to do a purple turtle or a teal water that he's hanging out in, you have permission to deviate from the path. So I am actually just using this uh, light brown, this raw sienna, just by itself. Um, if you're finding that that's a little too cool, you can mix a little bit of uh, yellow with it and that will warm it up. Um, and I might throw a little bit of yellow in there too at the end. But we're basically going to be filling in his shell and we're going to throw some other colors on top of it and then we'll go a little bit lighter as we move into the flippers and even the top of the head his arms and legs all right wow okay i just looked over at the chat everybody jumped on awesome hi jen denise anita uh anna and Denise and Tammy. Okay, I was trying to make sure I had all of them on there. So thank you guys so much for jumping on. Um, this is just making for such fun mornings. I really appreciate it. All right, so I'm actually just going to wipe that uh, paint off my brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of yellow just so you can see what it looks like to mix in with that. And again, we're imagining that this would be the highlight. And I am imagining that the sun is kind of coming um, through the water uh, from above. So I'm going to lay that yellow right on top of there and did lay it on there kind of thick, wipe off that excess paint. And then we're just going to kind of blend that into that raw sienna. And I'm using a bit more of that kind of, I guess, a little bit of pressure and smear compared to the stabbing method in a few other demos, but whichever blending method that you prefer, um, go with that one for today. And I am just making sure I go right on top of those pencil lines. Um, and now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to grab some of the raw sienna, or sorry, I keep saying it backwards, the burnt sienna, the reddish brown, and kind of underneath uh, the opposite side of where our highlight would be on the bottom part of the shell, just slapping some of that color on there, wiping off the excess paint, and then same thing, just blending that into that base raw sienna color. And don't forget to take a deep breath, 
relax, just have fun. Painting is a great escape from the rest of the world. It's certainly why I do it. All right, so I'm gonna clean that brush off. We're gonna go for a little bit lighter as we move into each of the paws, but we're gonna, or the, the flippers, the arms, the appendages. Um, and we're gonna kind of do the same thing where we'll put our base color on and then we'll get a little bit of a highlight and then we'll get a few places that's gonna be a little bit darker. So that pile of raw sienna I was using, uh, we're gonna add just a touch of white to it and we'll add a touch of yellow. So just go a little bit darker or a little bit lighter than what we were using on the shell. And apparently in my brain today, it's like opposite day. I keep saying the opposite of what I mean. So hopefully my actions will visually show you more than what my words are messing up with. All right, so going for that little bit lighter and that was the raw sienna with white with a touch of yellow. And we're gonna fill in pretty much all these fins and then we're gonna put some darker colors and lighter colors on top of it. And sea turtles are one of my favorite things to paint. I do normally paint with a palette knife and I like all the texture that the knife brings to my sea turtles. And oh, with that being said, um, I know yesterday you guys were asking about the samples. I did finally get that on the website and there is a link in the description box below. And it's basically a link to my portfolio. So it says Lovejoy Creations, I believe, slash portfolio. And that you can go see my regular portfolio work. And there's also an icon on there for the sample sale, as well as my watercolors. So feel free to check and explore. And pretty much anything that you purchase off of my Lovejoy Creations, off of Paint with Lovejoy, all goes to continue to fund either Paint with Lovejoy or my creative endeavors. And that's pretty much been my life for the last 20 years. All right, so we've got our base on there. We're going to wait and we'll do, actually, let's go ahead and, no, this is drying kind of fast. All right, we'll do that in a minute. We will put the same kind of method um, on the top of the head of the turtle. So I'm going to switch down to that lighter brush or smaller brush. Here I am saying the words backwards again. Going down to that small pointy brush, our yellow paint, we're going to put our highlight on here. And again, we're imagining that the sun's kind of coming from the top. And this highlight would actually be more at the top of the uh, arm flipper. And then just about halfway down, not, not fully. And then we'll have a little bit back here on this uh, back leg. I'm not going to put one on this flipper because that's going to be more in shadow. Same with that flipper. It's going to be more in shadow. So wipe that brush off from that yellow paint, and then we're just going to smear this yellow paint into that lighter color. There may not be a huge difference between the colors, um, but we do want to just look and make sure we have a bit of a lighter source. All right, so let's see. i got a question up here, looks like. Oh, cool. Welcome for scheduling the Sea Dragon. Thanks for the suggestion. And I think I got the... Other suggestion from yesterday, the clownfish, that's on there as well. But please let me know anything you guys want me to paint in the future, and I'll just keep adding them to the list. Um, and I believe I actually got the question wrong yesterday. Uh, I think Sonia asked either, I think you wanted to know how long I was going to continue doing the tutorials, and I thought you asked how long it takes me to do each tutorial. So assuming that the situation in the world continues as it is, I will keep doing these 11 o'clock daily demos until I get a job um, or until I get something that would take up this time frame, which likely might not happen because I have been self-employed and usually the mornings are not the times that I get scheduled for stuff. But yeah, I will keep this going um, for as long as I can, as long as it's, it's fun and workable for everybody. So I am on that pointy brush. I went oh, back to that reddish brown, that burnt sienna. And I'm just putting them in a few spots and then I'm going to blend that into um, the base color. So at home, if you're following along, just kind of look at the general placement of where I put that color. Mimic that on your canvas to the best of your ability. And then um, just kind of blend it and come close to what we're looking for. It doesn't have to be exact. All right, and my paint's already starting to dry, so I'm going to mix a little bit more of that base color. And I see a few more questions popping up, so let me check that out. 
All right. So if you need to, you can make more of that base color and blend it in with the darker. Like I said, it is a bit of a back and forth and the more that you paint, the more you kind of get comfortable and find your groove with mixing and pushing the paint around. All right, so let's see, there's the other question. So Jen's asking for a very large canvas. Uh, do you recommend golden open paint for blending large areas? Um, I know Golden has a couple of different brands. I haven't particularly used the Golden Open brand, um, but I'm assuming it's a bit more of a fluid paint and probably stays wet a little bit longer. I would say that would be a good, uh, good thing to use. And then also possibly look into adding, uh, what do they call them? Not the matte mediums, uh, but they're kind of retarders. They'll, they'll make them uh, extend the drying time. So you might have to ask at the art store what that is. But basically you wanna extend the drying time so that way you have a longer time to blend on these large surfaces um, and make wider brush strokes compared to getting back to like I'm doing right here for blending and it's already dry. So hope that helped answer your question. All right, so again, my paint is already starting to dry on here. So I am just making some of that initial base color and mixing my dark red, reddish brown back in with it. And no matter what you do when you paint or you're creative, you always have to adjust for your circumstances while you are painting in that time frame. So just because you did it perfect the day before, circumstances may be a little bit different the next day and not always the exact same method. Oh, nice. So let's see, a 32 by 40, that's a good size. You should be all right with um, just a bit more fluid paint on painting on that. Awesome, awesome. Oh, cool. Hi, Shauna from Portland, Oregon. I'm glad you and your husband are enjoying the videos and I hope you are painting. And I'm also gonna send you on a little treasure hunt when the economy opens back up. I have not been there, but I have been told that in Portland, there is a street called Lovejoy and all the businesses on there are named Lovejoy whatever, Lovejoy Tea Shop, Lovejoy Art Store. I do plan on going there one day with my brother because um, Lovejoy is our last name and I wanna go there and get my picture taken in front of every single Lovejoy business. So in the meantime, you can go down there and do that for me and just tell them they have an awesome, awesome name. All right, so we're gonna go up here towards our, the head of our turtle and then we are gonna go pretty dark for that belly. Then we'll, that'll give us time to let it dry. We'll do our dark blue on the water and then we can come back and do those lines on top of it so we will get some good brush control and brush work today. All right, so on the top of the head, let's see. I'm actually gonna go with just that raw sienna. It is a little bit darker. All right, and we're gonna kind of keep it on the top of his head because the bottom of his head and neck um, are a little bit lighter. So I kind of just kind of cut it right in half and we're gonna be adding that raw sienna mixture, that light brown. And again, here I'm doing it uh, using the exact same brush. Feel free to jump down to a smaller one um, as you get into tinier spaces. All right, and then I'm gonna grab some of that yellow and I'm gonna do this kind of quick just since my paint is drying out a little bit faster. So again, the yellow is gonna mimic kind of what the shell had. The yellow is gonna go on top and just start. It's actually sometimes easier just to grab the paint and move it and blend it while you have it on your brush instead of slapping it on there and then going back for blending. And then right above his little eyeball, let's get some light yellow in there and on his nose. All right, so now we're gonna go a little bit lighter here and then a little bit darker for his belly. So I'm actually just gonna start with that white and grab a little bit from that raw sienna and yellow mixture. And it doesn't have to be the exact color I'm using. You basically just want it lighter than what we just placed on there. All 
Alright. And then on the underbelly, we're actually going to go with that burnt sienna. And I'm, I have a feeling I'm going to make that a touch darker. But we're going to start with the burnt sienna just by itself. Yeah, we're going to make it darker. So I'm going to lay this on here and then I'm going to grab a tiny, tiny amount of black. And we're just going to mix it directly on the canvas. All right. So tiny, tiny amount of black, exact same type of blending method. I'm just going to slap it on there. And then you just kind of start working that into it. Basically, this is in shadow because it is the underbelly. And then that shell is actually making a pretty good uh, shadow underneath. All right, and while you have a little bit of this kind of dark mixture on your brush, let's go over to this back fin right here and just place a little bit right where that bottom of that neck and that fin meet. And then I'm just going to softly blend it and doing that little bit of that stabbing method helps as your paint's a little bit drier. Okay, that's not bad. Pretty good base to start with. And let's see, the canvas I'm working on right now, this is an 8x10. Um, and I do have the camera viewing, so it's going straight down. So I'm painting flat on a table uh, compared to being propped up on an easel. And I feel that it's more important for you guys to focus on what I'm seeing without it being distorted. So that's why I shoot from above, shooting straight down. And the smaller canvases are easier to fit into the frame. And they're cheaper to buy. <laughs> Uh, I did actually go to the post office and pick up my panels yesterday, so I do have fresh panels to start working on. All right, so clean that brush off really good. And like I said, I did want a pretty dark blue for the background. So I'm actually just going to use this blue just by itself. So literally just slap it on there. It's nice and dark. I am going to apply it pretty thick because I do want it staying that dark. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do some blending and changing the shade in here. Um, you are more than welcome if you want some light blue areas, darker blue, if you want some teal in there. Totally your call to switch it up to what you want. Uh, today, for me, I'm apparently feeling that, that blue and kind of chocolate mixture. This is almost like a uh, milk chocolate color. And I used to make hand-carved candles back in the day, and the blue and chocolate color combo was very popular for a couple of years. And then the... Let's see, what was it? It was like a lime green and a hot pink was super popular. So, like with fashion, uh, color trends do affect everybody's daily life and what's popular. So as you are coming up right up next to the edge of your turtle, do be very careful because you want to bring it right up next to that line, maybe a little on top of those black uh, lines or those pencil lines. And like I said, I am keeping this pretty dark, pretty thick. And if you're using student grade paint at home, you can tell that if you don't do it kind of thick, kind of like that, then it's a little more transparent and you can see it coming through. I want to hang out more in this dark color. So I am just using light pressure, applying it thick. If this is too much, apply one coat like this, let it dry, and then you can apply another coat on top of it. So there's always more than one way to get to the outcome or the solution that you're looking for. And if there's places on here that you want it darker, you can mix your blue and your purple together. I think I'm liking this color combo too, because I did watch the Oceans, the Nat Geo thing on Netflix. Um, and just that deep, gorgeous blue out in the deep ocean is really pretty. Remember to breathe. And if you find that your hand's kind of shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And if you need to, turn your canvas sideways, turn it upside down, whatever makes it easier for you to apply the paint. I am going to keep mine in the same orientation just since I am filming the video and having you guys watch what I'm doing. But you do not have to keep it in the same orientation. Let's 
see if there's any other questions. Oh, hi, Rhonda. Thanks for jumping on. All right, let's see. And I was just looking to see if there's any other questions. Uh, the sea turtle is in the traceables. Um, and the link, I've already actually got it uploaded to the website, so it's already on there. But you are welcome to pause the video and uh, draw what you see. And I do have a video, an art hack, on if you don't have carbon paper for your trans trans uh, traceable, you can uh, check that video out. And there's also another video on how to draw what you see. And I introduce a very simple grid method and the trace for great practice for that because it's better for a line drawing um, for learning how to draw simply. So check out those other videos and just keep pushing your own creative skills. If you find something that scares you in the creative world, um, looks really, really difficult, those are the things you actually should strive to accomplish. So if you think it looks really crazy and difficult, that means you're going to learn a lot from it. And the more effort you put into learning that, the greater the rewards are at the end. So challenge yourself. The world, the creative world is a great place to do that. Generally, it is a safe place to challenge yourself. But when you learn to challenge yourself in the creative world, then you turn, learn to challenge yourself in your work life and your business stuff. Um, and really when you challenge yourself, you're just learning to step out of your comfort zone and go, oh, that wasn't that bad. Let's, let's do it again. Let's try something else. So in creativity, like I said, it's just a nice gateway into learning how to step out of your comfort zone and be successful in stepping out of your comfort zone. All right, and given the transparency, you can see some places where it's a little bit lighter, a little bit thicker. I may, when this dries after the demo, uh, just do one more coat. Cause like I said, I am going for that. I'm feeling that pretty dark bluish color right now. All right. So yeah, so if you wanna change any of your shades, if you wanna have a little bit of a lighter area, you can do that same wet on wet blending that we've done in a lot of the demos. You can throw some black in there to go darker. You can throw some white. You can throw some teal. Um, kind of anything that you might want to add. But you do want to do any of the blending part while your paint is wet. It's just going to make it a little bit easier for you. Or you let it dry and then you'll end up putting another coat on top of it. And then you can do blending on that as well. All right. So yeah, like I said, this is definitely probably going to get a second coat at the end of our um, at the end of the demo I don't think I'll make you guys watch all of that but it will get a second one for sure all right and hopefully I'm going to pronounce your name correctly will dad will dad I'm just going to apologize right now for any and all the names that I mispronounce um, but I'm glad you made it and I'm glad you find the videos relaxing and hopefully, like I said, I didn't mess up your name too much. All right, so going back into, we're actually gonna go black. I'm gonna re-outline that eye again. And then we will use a mixture of yellow and white to start doing the lines and the details on top of this uh, shell and on top of the fins. So first starting off with just that black. And if you need to, you can put your pinky out as a pivot point and use that as to kind of your, your point to rotate or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. But definitely make sure you breathe and relax. When you do small detailed work, it actually doesn't help to hold your breath. Okay. So I did leave that little white catch light. If you end up going over that, just reapply your catch light with white paint and literally just place it right on top of there and that's it. All right, so we're still sticking with that small pointy brush. Pull some of that white aside, little touch of yellow. Your call, it can be a one-to-one -one ratio or it can be more white or more yellow. Doesn't matter, we're just going basically going for a pretty good contrasting color 
on top of our shades of brown. All right, and again, as I add these on here, you do not have to get them perfect. You're just going for the general area, and especially as we get into the fins, um, you do want to kind of treat your brush like a pencil, light pressure, and then every now and then notice and see if you've got a lot of buildup. You can always wipe that off, and then that will bring your bristles back together, and then you can apply the paint at the end. So just kind of adjust what you need as we go through this process. So here I'm actually starting on the turtle shell and I'm starting on the left hand side, the back end. And we're going to put a little bit of a perimeter. He's got a little bit of, a, I guess, some perimeter shells and then we'll do the interior larger designs. So again, remember to breathe, relax, play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure creates a skinnier line. More pressure creates a little bit of a wider line. And if you have a variety of widths of lines today, that is totally okay. It's more important just the fact that you're actually painting. And again, just kind of mimic where you see me placing these. Take it slowly. Got a few kind of little broken up sections here. All right, good job. I'm going to clean that brush really quick, just getting all that paint off, and we're going in for even skinnier lines as we get into the fins. All right, and on these guys, I like to kind of start at the left-hand side, the back of their little flipper, because these are a little bit wider cells, and just think of them as like weird cell shapes that we're going to be making. Um, they don't have to have a great uh, logical order to them, and in fact, they don't. And as you do these, after you paint it, when you see another picture of a sea turtle or you actually go and see one at the aquarium, Notice just the weird design that their flippers and their shell usually has. And kind of like our fingerprints, there's no two designs on a turtle exactly the same. So again, you can see that I am grabbing paint every couple of brush strokes, so feel free to always do that. And I am kind of applying it a little bit thicker, just so that way it's going to stand on top of the colors underneath. And again, these little cell shapes don't have to be anything perfect. And if you need to mix more of your color and it's a slightly different shade the next time, that's okay. I'm going to jump to the other side of that flipper, get a few of those long ones. They do tend to have a few really small little tiny cells um, kind of in the center of their flippers. And even after you do this once, um, if you want to go back and even take that pure white in a few areas, that'll help kind of pop it a little bit. We will do that in the video. Um, but if you feel like doing it more than I'm going to, go right ahead. And then as you're looking at those links in the description box, um, definitely check out my portfolio and go see the other turtles that I have on there. Um, there should be, there'll be some on the available portfolio and the sold one. And just look at all the different random crazy colors that I have on that. Uh, very, very unexpected on each one of my turtles. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on the head of the turtle, and then we'll go into the other little flippers. And again, you're just breaking up that space on the head. And it does not have to be perfect or exact. It's 
a happy little one. Another little spot right here. And then we're gonna move into, oh, let's get a little bit on that eyebrow. All right, and then again, remember wipe that brush off is F, ugh, if needed. I've definitely been tripping over my words this morning. Hope you guys are finding it as amusing as I'm finding it. And same thing on these other little flippers, just adding those weird little cell shapes. And then we're gonna go in with some white, and then I think we'll add a few more darker shades. And that should bring us to the conclusion. So this will probably be a 40 minute little demo. Looks like we're just now at the 30 minute mark. Not bad, like little quick painting break for the day. Oh, cool. So just looking over different comments um, on the Mandarin duck. I haven't added it to the demo yet just because I need a new um, or to the sample sale. I need a new picture and I did a round two on it. So I just haven't taken that new picture from it, um, but I'll get it up there. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to do, let's see, let's do the white first and then we'll do a few dark shadows in there because I want to go a little bit darker spots on the face of the turtle. So wiping that uh, pointy brush off, we're grabbing that pure white and we're just going to kind of put this in a few little areas um, and a few of them are going to go on the lines we just made and then a few um, on the shell probably will not. So right now for the lines on the shell, again we're imagining that the sun is hitting from that top side. And anytime that we add the white, kind of like right here, that just gives an indication that we have the sun hitting or the light source is coming from a specific direction. And then here on the head, going back into where the lines are. Same on the fin, and I'm not connecting all of these. They're just kind of, I'm touching a few of the spaces in the lines, um, kind of in the center of this fin. Again, just imagining that this is the place where the sun's hitting that fin first. All right, let me look up through the camera just to see how it's looking there. Not too bad. We do have a big hazy spot right here. Sorry about that. And definitely I will be doing one more layer of blue on this background. Um, after it dries and then the end of the video. So now we're gonna go back in with that reddish brown. We're gonna do a few more dark spots on there and that will bring us into the conclusion of this painting. All right, so again, these are gonna go in between those little cells just because they are a little bit darker on their face than the rest of their body. And as you guys are going about your day, feel free, jump over and check out my online school, paint with Lovejoy. Um, please email me photos of what you paint. Email them paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, tag me in social media. Basically just keep painting, keep getting creative. Let me know future subjects you want me to paint. And like I said, I'll keep these demos going for as long as I can. And at the moment, it's gonna be a while. So it's a good thing. So I'm actually just making a few of these darker little spots down here in the fin. All right, and other little business stuff, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said, leave suggestions for what you want me to paint in the future. If you wanna be financially supportive of Paint With Lovejoy, greatly appreciated. There are links in the description box below. You can become a patron. You can flat out send me money. 
You can join one of the um, classes for the online school and send money that way. You can purchase a sample. All that money is going to be going back into creating this. Um, and yeah. And it is through all of your guys' support, the reason the demos have been taking off, uh, the reason I created the online school. So you guys are a huge influence on what I create and do in the future. So it's important. All right, so this guy turned out kind of cute. Um, feel free if you want to keep adding and do use different colors. You can use some of my artwork as inspiration. Um, but like I said, I will do one more layer of the blue on here because I want it to be pretty solid, so that way this guy jumps on there. And I will upload this one up to the sample sale uh, after that layer is put on there. And with the new panels that I got that are in my car right now, uh, more of the demos I will probably offer up on the sample sale and not do the re-gessoed, reusing of the canvases. So. All right, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and just sharing your time, sharing parts of your day with me. And thanks for sharing this with your friends and getting people to paint and get creative. So until tomorrow, um, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.